Hey, it's Kristen at Orphe Beatrice. Today, we're gonna start the transition from summer to fall decor with this super easy $5 harvest sign. Let's get started. Also, if you love budget DIYs, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Here's a look at our summer porch. Um, it's partially covered and I made this welcome sign a couple of summers ago. I never painted the back, so we're actually gonna flip it over for the harvest sign today. It's a six foot board and it's nine inches in width. You can get one for a couple bucks at your local hardware store. I also made the striped black and white rug for three bucks. So I'll post that link in, to the video in the description box below. My Instagram followers all voted for the distressed look. So I'm gonna be showing you guys some really fun distressing techniques that don't involve any sandpaper. And I randomly had an extra tablecloth from one of our parties, so it's from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna end up using it as my tarp today. I have loaded the description box below full of tons of goodies for you guys, uh, including all the paint colors that I used, the name of the font that I'm using, and also the cut file if you're a Cricut user. I'm using Dollar Tree contact paper to create my stencil, but if you don't have a Cricut, you can still very easily do this project and you can do it by going to defont.com and downloading the free font that I used, putting it into Microsoft Word and printing each of the letters out individually on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Once you have them printed out, you just take an X-Acto knife and you can see here I'm using a ruler to cut along the edges of each letter to create your stencil. You can also use a store-bought stencil. Um, many of the hobby stores or craft stores have them specifically for uh, signs that are large. These are really popular, so they've also got some great options there. Okay, next we're gonna do some basic math to figure out the spacing of our letters. My board is 72 inches long and the word harvest has seven letters in it. Each of my stenciled letters are 5.5 inches tall. So we'll go letter height times the number of letters that we have gives us 38.5 inches that will be taken up on the board. That's gonna leave us with about 33 inches left of space to divide into the spaces of the board. Since the word harvest has seven letters, we're gonna end up with eight spaces between the letters. Next, we're going to equally divide those 33 and a half inches into the spaces between the letters. Since the harvest sign has eight spaces, 33.5 divided by eight ends up coming up to 4.18 inches. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds a lot easier to just measure everything by four inch increments. So I multiplied the 1.8 by eight to have an extra one and a half inches to distribute to the top and the bottom. I know I just zipped through that so fast. Hopefully it didn't bore you guys. Um, if it confused you at all, just screenshot this graphic. Uh, you can see in the center, I gave what the final math for the spacing of the harvest sign will be. You can also adapt this formula for any size board you have with any word you choose. Okay, enough of the boring stuff, let's start painting. You can see I've got about two tablespoons of water in this bowl. I'm going to be using the Harvest Orange color. This, these are all acrylic paints, so when you add water to them, it will dilute it and it'll actually work almost like a stain and become a little bit more translucent. Because we're doing a more distressed look, I want you to be able to see some of the wood grain, and then it will also allow me to use full strength orange paint later to create more of that distressed feel. A foam brush for watered down acrylic paint is awesome because it just helps it spread on so much easier and it made this part of the process go by so fast. If you're worried about the staying power of the acrylic paint outside, you can buy from Rust-Oleum for about $4, I think at Target, this clear matte finish uh, spray, and that'll help make the board more all weather. 
I kind of like that the board fades over time and it really does have that feel like it was painted a long time ago and it's um, weathering with the elements. But if you don't have a covered porch and you're worried about that, this is a great inexpensive product that will help keep the board nice for longer. Next, I'm using some undiluted Harvest Orange paint and I'm gonna mimic the paint chips on the board. So I do this by using a light hand and not a lot of paint and working in vertical sections down the board. You always wanna work with the wood grain because that is how a board would actually weather if it were painted and left out for a long time, which is what we want it to look like. I've still got my green sides of the board and honestly, probably just gonna leave them. I think that the front of the board will look nice enough that nobody's gonna be looking at the sides. This paint technique is awesome if you hate sanding as much as I do. Now, you're welcome to leave your board like this or you could also take a little bit of dark paint to add in some more dimension. I had that green paint that was left over on the side so I used some brown paint just to add a little bit more into other parts of the board to make it look like the board was a little bit darker. We were gifted a real barnwood sign from my husband's grandmother's barn that they tore down and it had these really cool uh, brush strokes from where they had hand painted the barn. I will uh, put it on Instagram, you guys can go over and check it out, but I added that to my board because I just loved how it looked and feel like it gives it a little bit more of that real rustic barnwood feel. Make sure that your paint is completely dry before you lay your stencils. And after you've laid each of them, just go through and double check that your spacing is correct. Mine is four inches, so I made sure each of the letters was spaced perfectly four inches before I began painting. I'm gonna be painting using the Beachcomber Beige color and um, some of my stencils at the top were just cut a little too close to the edge and I'm gonna be using that green brush to stipple so I didn't want any of the paint to get onto the sign where there wasn't a stencil. So you can take just a little piece of contact paper uh, just to protect the lettering around. I also made sure to push down on each of the letters before starting to paint it just to make sure it hadn't lifted off of the board. I'm sure you guys have seen signs where you do all of this work and then you go to put your stencil on and it starts bleeding underneath. It's one of the reasons that I really like using contact paper and the way that I keep mine from not bleeding is using very little paint. You can see that I used a fresh clean brush and just dabbed a little paint onto the tips and then I'm working it into the bristles of the brush. Less is totally more. Uh, you don't want a big gob of paint to um, get right underneath that stencil and ruin all of the work that you've done. So it does take a little bit of patience, but I started out really slow putting the paint on there. You can also use, sorry guys, the camera is bouncing all over the place and I promise in the next 30 seconds I figure it out and move it so you guys don't have to endure bouncing around with me while I stipple this on. You can also use this kind of a technique um, and that gets a little bit more paint onto the sign faster than if you were to brush it. All right, here's the moment of truth. We're gonna rip the Band-Aid off and see how the stencils did. Actually, on the A also, I got a little paint on the board over the stencil. I was probably just going a little too fast. So I'll show you if you did get paint anywhere that you don't want it, how you can correct it. This paint also is about 75% dry. You can wait until it's completely dry. I just wouldn't recommend taking the stencil off right after you've painted it. 
I'm gonna show you guys some of the different distressing techniques that you could use. This is using some of the beachcomber beige or whatever color you've chosen to stencil your letters on with. You can take that and just run it kind of around where the letter is. Again, make sure you're using those uh, vertical strokes along, but it just kind of helps blend in some of the color from the letters and brings that into the board as well. And on the A, you'll notice I went over on my stencil. So if that happens to you or if uh, any of your stencils did bleed, just take some of that base color, in my case, the Harvest Orange, and you can blot out any of the imperfections that you have. For this next technique, I mixed a little bit of the brown paint in with some of the Harvest Orange and I'm going to use the foam brush to kind of run over the lettering to make it look like I have sanded it. I'm sure you guys have figured out by now I absolutely hate sanding and will do everything that I can to avoid it. I'd much rather paint the distress onto the board. Also in some of the places around the R, I feel like I went a little wild with the white. So I went over those areas with the orange paint just to blend them in a little. Let me know in the comments below what word you plan to use on your sign. And when it's finished, don't forget to tag me on Instagram because I would love to cheer you on and see what you've come up with. I've got a couple more ideas before we completely transition our porch into fall. I'm gonna be making a Dollar Tree DIY door hanger. You guys know I am terrible at making wreaths. So you don't wanna miss the door hanger. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.